Hey folks, this video is brought to you by Blueberry AI. In fact, that's what we're going to cover today. So when I evaluate new AI or 3D software, I'm asking several questions. What does it do? Is it easy to use? Will it save me time? Removing pain points, letting me focus on the things I enjoy most. Of course, I'm asking what's the cost and will it keep my content safe? So let's jump in and take a look at the software. I started by going to their main website page, uh, blueberry-ai.com and signed up for a free trial. And then before even engaging with the software, I wanted to see what sort of features they listed on their web page. So I went through. This digital asset management tool includes support for a ton of 3D file types, and I'm especially excited about the ability to try its AI search and version control capabilities. They also offer a really nice combination of features as well. So there's some interesting information that reflected what I see happening with the 3D world, which is the world of games, the world of industrial design, the world of architectural design, they're all converging as 3D source providers. So somebody who works in one area might start to cross over, which is happening with me. They listed a bunch of clients. NetEase and Tencent are huge companies, as well as some of these companies that are listed are top video game companies. So those are big wins in terms of their client base. Let's take a look at the software itself. Okay, so we're inside of Blueberry and I'm checking out the interface. I've used this for a few days and I just wanna give you my thoughts on the software. So first of all, the upper left-hand corner, we're in the digital asset management part. So what's going on here? Well, we've got the ability to create folders that are shared with teams and then you can specify who and what you want to share the assets with. Okay, but we need to stop for a second because one of the key things that this product offers is massive integration with other 3D and other design packages. What have we got here? We've got Blender, Autodesk FBX files, Rhino, 3ds Max, Maya, Marmoset 3D, as well as other programs like Figma and Sketch, which are amazing. I'm also going to show it a little bit later. I'll show the integration with the Adobe plugin. The other thing I think is interesting and really worth mentioning is it's a convergent tool. It has integration with all these other products as well and other plugins coming soon. Let's look at its 3D file capabilities. I started out by testing just a few files that I made myself, but then I wanted to see how this would work with a large number of assets. So I've got 600 megabytes of Blender assets and I just grabbed them all and dropped them into the platform. And you can see it's given me sort of an estimate of time and how fast they're uploading. So I'm sure it varies depending on where you are, but it's coming down really fast. And then while it's doing that, you can see the other ones that I uploaded. Here's some 3DS Max ones and some ones from Maya as well. So that's awesome. So I'll come back in just a second after the Blender has uploaded. All right, that didn't take long. All the Blender files uploaded and then after it uploaded, the AI went through and did an auto tagging routine. So I'll talk more about that in a second, but first let's talk about objects themselves. Let's see what we can do with these. So we can examine the objects, a 3D space. We can also preview. I like this feature where it breaks out. We can look at these individually, but I like being able to see all of these different facets of the 3D material space. So that's cool. I noticed that you can go into the materials here and you look at them like sort of individually. And that's awesome. There's also material IDs, which I look at all the time and as well as a breakout into the meshes and the UV space. So that's really great. The other thing that I wanted was to, I had seen a demo with this character previously. And so the Blueberry team kindly shared it with me that is nice. Part of the reason why I wanted to see this was that I had seen that it can also preview animations. So 
there it is there's animation and yes it can so that's awesome you can do frame by frame nice okay oh you get to see all many how many frames per second we're playing too awesome so yeah a lot of great capabilities here let's move on i tested a few custom files and by default when you bring them in they're set to private not only that but when you upload things it auto tags which is really cool i like that and so for example like this is a normal map hey look it got that it's a normal map and it's sort of understood that it's a photo and and here we are it not only knew that it was a photo but it's using ai to under identify elements of the photo and how does that work with your workflow as your asset library gets larger and larger finding these elements by these tags and then also by a thing called semantic searching which is part of what ai is good at is it allows you to check out the elements by both a description you can like then you can also filter it right so there's like a semantic search by image or by like 3d models the other thing that i was also able to test was checking or searching by a similar image so let me show how i tested that out so in the shared folder they have a bunch of assets the game industry demo files and so here we are and what i did was i took a screen capture of just like an unreal character like the manny character and so i'm going to search to see what it finds that's similar to that so let's just drop that in so anything similar to that why yes other character based or robotic looking okay so that works that's pretty cool what else um, there's different layouts that you can generate and it's also possible to then it's not only possible to share these assets with specific people but it's also um, possible to version them and it seems like it has a sort of a built-in versioning system not only that but it obviously scales well given the clients that they're already using it and it connects into elements like perforce which is a version control like sort of the version control system that's out there as well as uh, jira for large teams okay what else can it do here so this aigc this stands for ai generated content uh, it looks like by default and i'm just using the shared version you get a certain number of credits to try out these three different models of so dolly mid journey and share creators and so that's kind of cool you can uh, if you've used or not used these before, but like mid journey is one of the stronger AI generated for maybe doing brainstorming or testing out sketches and then generating moods or that's cool. And what else we've got? Um, okay. We can filter by activity. Uh, I was reading about the advertising, but did not check this out was it's not something that I do but really what it allows is some sort of connection to things like uh, third-party advertisements with data analytics and so that looked really interesting to me I'd be interested in getting more into that and then finally the plugins area and I did test this out why I used the Photoshop plugin so how does this work well what it allowed me to do I'm going to pause this. I allowed me to, I downloaded the plugin. It piped right into Photoshop and then I generated a key and the key then I was able to, let me just drag my Photoshop over. I plugged the key in and then it immediately connected the cloud system to, uh, to Photoshop. And what that allowed me to do then was if I made a new image, then I can click this upload current document. It just pops right into whatever folder I specify. And then it does all the auto tagging uh, and work. And then same thing with like, I can do edit and version it as well. And it keeps track of all the data. So that was really, I thought that was a really amazing, potentially useful workflow for me. Really my pain point has been, I've always been a generalist solo person at, and don't use a lot of subcontractors just because the extra amount of time doesn't always fit the projects that I do in addition to being a professor. But I think a system like this might really open the door to 
allowing me to work with more people and then effectively manage my time where I can basically just outsource parts that I don't want to do, which would allow me to do more advanced or design related or technical related elements that I want to focus on. So, all right, so let's wrap things up. The final question, which was, what would it cost? So I checked it out and they have a pricing structure for around $10 per month for small teams, which look like it would totally suit me. But I encourage you to try out the free version and see what would work best for you and your team. But that'll wrap things up for today's video. If you like the video, give it a like and make sure you subscribe for more weekly content.